Are rising interest rates going to crash the housing market? Is inflation slowing down buyer demand and their ability to pay their mortgages? Will rising credit card debt and all-time high stall the housing market? Hi, everyone. It's Nate McLean, and this is the North Central Washington Market Update for March 2023. The recent information, the data just came out from Pacific appraisers, and we're going to dive deep into the numbers. We're going to look at sales. We're going to look at inventory. We're going to look at list price to sell price ratio. We're going to look at micro markets, micro climates. I'm also going to predict what's going to happen the rest of the way, 2023. I've been in real estate for the last 15 years. I've seen a boom. I've seen a bust. and I've seen the gradual incline with nearly 0% interest. And now we have rising interest rates. But I want to start this off with showing you a video of the Fed Chair Jerome Powell yesterday making an announcement. And this is a clip with uh, Sen uh, Senator John Kennedy grilling Jerome Powell about interest rates. It's really, really interesting. And so let's, let's take a look at this. Yeah, All right, let's about. try to unpack this then. <clears throat> I'm not trying to trick you. You're raising interest rates. You're raising interest rates to slow the economy, are you not? Yes, to cool the economy off. Um, and one of the ways you measure your success, other than fluctuation in gross domestic product, is the unemployment rate. Is it not? Yes, one of the measures. Okay. So in effect, this, I'm not being critical. When you're slowing the economy, you're trying to put people out of work. That's your job, is it not? Not really. We're trying to we're trying to restore price stability. No, um, you're trying you're trying to raise not, not the wages. you're trying to raise the unemployment rate. There are and, a lot, so there are a lot mean, of that mean I know you don't like the phrase, so let me strike it. You're trying to raise the unemployment rate, are you not? No, we're not trying to raise it. We're trying to realign supply and demand, which could happen through a bunch of channels. Like for example, uh, you know, just job openings. All job right, let openings. Me, let could, me put it another way, okay? The economists did a, did a wonderful study. They looked at, at, at 10 disinflationary periods in America going all the way back to the 1950s. Disinflation is what you're trying to do. It's a slowing in the rate of inflation. Am I right? Yes. In other words, prices don't go down. They just don't go up as fast. Deflation is when prices actually go down. You're trying to achieve disinflation, are you not? Yes, we are. Okay. Based on history, in the 10 times that we got inflation down, disinflation since the 1950s, in order to reduce inflation by 2%, unemployment had to go up 3.6%. Now, that's history, is it not? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but yes, the standard has been that there have been recessions and downturns when okay. the Fed has tried to reduce inflation. Now, right now, the, the current inflation rate is 6.4%, and the current unemployment rate is 3.4%. Now, if history is right, I'm not asking you to, 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 again, blame anybody, but if history is right, unless you get some help in order to get inflation down from 6.4%, to let's say 4.4%, and the unemployment rate is going to have to rise to 7% based on history. That's what the record would say. Okay. And to get inflation down to 2.2% based on history, an immutable fact, unemployment would have to go to 10.6%. Would it not? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That's uh, what the record shows. That's what the history shows. Yeah, I, I don't think... Now, that's really, really interesting. It's a really, really interesting interchange between Senator Kennedy and uh, Jerome Powell about unemployment rates. So that's what the Fed chair is looking at. He's looking at interest rates in terms of rising interest rates, rate keep, continue to rate hike until unemployment rate starts going up. So essentially letting people out of the job. So if you look at the North Central Washington real estate marketplace, jobs are, you know, unemployment rate is really good. I mean, we have a lot of jobs, a lot of opportunity. We also have a lot of people moving here from out of the area, Bellevue, Seattle, Redmond, retiring, bringing over their retirement funds in their, you know, the baby boomers and things like that. So a lot of things going on right now, but definitely something to look at in the unemployment rate. So let's jump into the, the data and I'm going to just kind of cross-reference what you just experienced there. 
um, stopping my screen share and I can screen with, share with you guys the actual report that came out. It says February, but I can tell you that when I look at this, I reported in, in March. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys see this a little bit better. This is done by Pacific Appraisal and Associates. They do a good job of getting the report. They get the information from the MLS, from the Realtor Association, uh, the auditor and the sales records. If you, you can see here, I don't wanna pay close attention. Total sales, 39 in the Wenatchee Valley. Only 39 homes sold in the month of February. It was a really cold winter. Um, that had to do with it. Not a lot of people driving over from the other side of the mountains to look at second homes, vacation homes, relocation. That wasn't happening. First time home buyers were kind of hot and cold, hot and cold with interest rates, trying to time that and juggle that. So sales are down 7% from last year. But really last year wasn't that great either. So it's yeah, not that big of a deal, really. I mean, if you look at sales year to date, we had 82 last year, 2020. That was a good year. 2023, 80. So we're only down 2%. North Central Washington housing market. I mean, rose-colored glasses. Obviously, I'm an agent. I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to spin it a little bit positively. But overall, not that bad. Something to pay attention to. Average days on market, 100 days. I mean, people really need to pay attention to that. 100 days on the marketplace. We just had a listing, East Wenatchee. They've been on the market for three weeks and they're, they're a little nervous. I'm like, hey, don't be nervous. Three weeks is not a long time considering everything that's going on and the marketplace is hundred days. Even with our marketing, we can do better than hundred days, but, but in the winter time, it's going to take a little bit longer. Inventory levels, as you can see, are up 143% to 114. But we all have amnesia here. I mean that we just have amnesia to think that that's a crazy stat. 143% increase in inventory. You think that it's going to be a buyer's market here. As inventory rises, it be, swings towards a buyer's market. But I can tell you that, you know, a normal marketplace is 500, 600 listings. When I got into the real estate industry, we had over 1,100, 1,200 listings in the Valley. I mean, so 114 historically is actually really, really low. And that's the thing about this real estate market, why it's so topsy-turvy and, and it's it can't be explained, is a lot of people... Uh, inventory hasn't been solved. Regulations on building homes, developing properties, the time it takes to bring new homes to the marketplace is tough. You know, I, I say write your mayor, write your county commissioners, let them know. And I know this is counterintuitive. Let them know that you would like to see more opportunities in development because the only way we can get affordable housing in this marketplace is if we have more inventory. We got to have more inventory. Now we can do it respectfully. We can do it responsibly. We can do it with great planning. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have some commercial zoning or some some mixed use zoning or some some forethought in our development versus you know checkered board residential developments in between orchards? Who wants that? Who wants an orchard and then like eighty homes and then an orchard and then eighty homes and you got the spray drift and you got these things? Who wants that? Let's get some planning. Let's get some planning involved. I'm, I'm writing the commissioners, you know, and, and I'm letting them know my thoughts. Median sales price is down 4%. The average sales price is down 5%. It's now below 500,000 first time in over a year. Uh, that I want to touch on that. Average sales price to list price ratio, 94%. That's good news for buyers. You can come on, you can come in on list price and come down five, six, seven percent of list price, get a good deal. Sellers, not so good sign. You know, you got to price it effectively and you got to get, you have to have really good marketing. Um, and that's the thing. So now let's look down here. It's going to be really small. So let me zoom in here. I'm going to zoom in. The, what really matters is your micro market. Now, homes over a million dollars, seven months of inventory. Homes over a million dollars, seven months of inventory. So, let me go down there. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. You can actually see that. So homes over a million dollars, seven months of inventory. That's a buyer's market. So balance is six months. Anything above six is a buyer's market. So getting a home above a million dollars, uh, yeah, interest rates are affecting that. There's less cash buyers. As you move down, you can see it's a buyer's market. I mean, it's, I mean, a seller's market still below a million is still a seller's market. 
How long will it stay a seller's market? That's anyone's guess, but I'm here to tell you that right around the second week of March is when inventory starts going up. So I predict March, April, May, June, July, August, September, inventory is going to rise and we're going to see a buyer's market in all price ranges above $400,000 unless the builders get into the mix. So if you're, we're back to a normalized market, meaning people are going to buy and sell because of their life changes and their quality of life decisions. So if you're interested in moving up, moving down, moving out, relocating, right? It's still okay to get it because you're going to sell your home. Someone emailed me today and said, Nick, I'm thinking about selling my home. I said, if you want to move in the next two years, you should do it now because prices are going to go down for the next two years. So if you're going to make a move, make a decision, and it's going to happen in the next two years, the longer you wait, the less you're going to get. And you might say, hey, Nick, where are you going to go? What am I going to do? Well, that's true too. It's something you got to plan out, but I think you can plan this stuff out and get ahead. All right, that's the market update. We're going to do these live every week. Stay tuned and jump on the next webinar. You'll get, if you're on my mailing list, go to nickmcclainrealestate.com, sign up on our website if you want to get on a mailing list. I'm going to send out invitations every week so you can get the live uh, reporting as soon as it comes out.